Hello everybody, and welcome to part 9 of my Unreal Engine Crash Course. Uh, we're approaching the finish line. Uh, one more thing we have to add though are some sounds, because our game is rather quiet and dull at the moment. So, um, in the description you will find a drive link, and this will point you to uh, these four sounds. So, download these, and afterwards we're gonna get going and add them. Alright, so... We have these four sounds. Uh, to add sounds, once again, we can select all of them and just drag them in here. This will take a second. And now you can see we've added these sounds. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, we have this uh, pickup sound that we're going to add whenever we uh, pick up a jerry can. Then we have a wind sound that we're going to add as ambience. And last but not least, we have uh, two variations of a button click sound. And we're going to add this to the UI, so the pause UI. Whenever we click resume or quit, we're going to play one of these two sounds. So, these are three different ways in which we can play sounds, and I'm going to show you each of them uh, based on either the button click, uh, wind, or pickup. Uh, let's start with the pickup. And... Um, if you open this up, you can see this is a um, a sound wave asset, and you can change some stuff in here. But uh, for now, we don't need to change anything in here. What we're going to do is actually create a, another asset from this called a sound cue. We're going to just uh, stick to that name. We're going to add an A in front of everything for uh, audio. That's what I like to do. And uh, now let's open this cue. So you can see this resembles, uh, this somewhat resembles the material editor, but there's a bit less stuff in here. You can also change the volume and pitch here. And you can see we have this wave player, which is basically, you know, an audio file. And then we have this output where the uh, final result is. And we can put effects in here in between. By right clicking, there's a bunch of stuff. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually randomize the uh, volume and pitch a bit, so it's not always the same sound. We can do this by um, dragging out or right-clicking, and then we're going to add the modulator. And let's connect that up. And uh, in here you can set a minimum and maximum of random pitch randomness. So if you play right now, you can see it sounds slightly different each time. Uh, I think the pitch variation is a bit too much, so I'm actually going to reduce the randomness slightly, and if we play it now... There are subtle differences, and this will help if we pick up a bunch of coins in quick succession, so it's not always the same sound. It adds a bit of much-needed variety to a sound that will play a lot. Okay. Um, now we have this uh, sound cue. Let's add it whenever we... Um pick up a coin. So in here, in the coin asset, we're just going to play this before we destroy the actor. Uh, just type in play sound. There are two ways we can play it. Uh, either 2D, which is perfect for UI sounds, that's the one we're going to use, or at a specific location in the world. And this will make a different uh, difference if we, um, you know, have headphones and then play it as, at a specific location and it will be panned in your headphones appropriately, depending on where your camera is and where the sound is. But we don't really need this for a pickup sound, so we're going to use the 2D because it's it's a UI sound. So select the um, select the sound cue by just, uh, you know, using this drop down. And now when we play, that's all we need to do. Okay. And you can hear the slight variations. Okay, we've added the pickup sound. Next up is um, uh, next up are the button sounds. So we're going to create a another sound cue. I'm actually going to name this a button click cue to make the name a bit shorter. And in here, you can see we have one wave player, but we need the one for the other coin if we want to randomize them. So select this. You can either drag it in like the material or right click and from selected add this wave player. So um, we're gonna choose one of these two sounds by random so right click and select random. Put these both in here and drag that into the output and now when we play you can see it alternates between the two. It's not very random because there's only 
two sound waves. If we had more, then this wouldn't be as noticeable that it basically goes through each one before starting over. Uh, we can um, change that by unchecking randomize without replacement when we select this node uh, on the left side here. You can read what the text says, but basically this means that it doesn't alternate and um, it adds some much needed randomness because we only have two sounds. So. Okay, nice. Uh, let's add that to our pause menu. Double click, open this up, and we're going to select the sounds. On the right, we're going to expand style, and you can see we have a pressed sound and a hovered sound. We don't have anything for hovered sound, but we have something for a pressed sound. Our sound cue. So um, make sure you select it for both buttons. Uh, compile, save, and uh, close that down. And now... Whenever we click resume, one of the two sounds will be randomly played. Same with quit. The sound actually cuts off because the game quits, but it still plays a bit of it. Okay, and uh, last but not least, we have the uh, wind. Before we add it, we need to go in here and actually change something. We need to make set it to looping, because, you know, we want our wind to loop. Otherwise, it will just stop after it plays through it completely. And we can just click and drag this in here and Unreal will automatically create an ambient sound actor. So, now when we play, we have our wind sound. And it will play no matter where we start. If you want to limit the location in which it plays, you can play around with this setting called attenuation. This basically adds these two spheres, and we have an inner sphere where the sound will play at maximum uh, volume if the camera is in it. And then we kind of have, a, you know, a range in which the sound gets quieter, and when it uh, goes outside of the outer sphere, then it stops playing. And you can uh, you can use that for sound effects that should only play locally, but for the wind, uh, because it's all going to be a desert. Um, you can just l turn it off and leave it like that. And if you enable it, you can also enable other stuff like um, occlusion. So basically, like when the sound is, you know, behind a wall, you can make it quieter. And this is also a feature. There's a bunch of stuff you can play around with here. Reverb. Um, but we're not going to use this. And this is um, not something I'm really going to delve deep into. This is just a quick overview. Okay. And these are three different ways in which you can add sounds for specific events, for ambience, and for the UI. Okay, uh, a very quick and short episode. Um, just a quick primer and sound, really, because uh, once again, admittedly, this is not my area of expertise. But I wanted to show you the basics because a game without any sounds is... Um, kind of boring. And I think even just having a few in here already adds a lot. So yeah. Um, where can you find sounds, in case you're wondering? Where did I find these sounds? I actually found them on a site called gamesounds.xyz. I have a bunch of sound libraries uh, bookmarked, some for music, but these are more for sounds. And if you scroll down here, if we just go in one folder, you can see there's a bunch of different folders for a lot of different sounds, so you will definitely find the sounds you're looking for here, unless it's something really specific. And once again, make sure you read the license. Uh, this is also very uh, lenient. It, you can use them on an unlimited number of projects. Um, you can use them without attribution, but uh, it's best to still give credit. Um, you can use them for games, which is important for us. Um, and you can copy them to as many computers. Uh, not like they could really stop you. Oh, you didn't hear me say that. Uh, you can do some more stuff. It's, uh, once again, uh, for at least um, these sounds and this uh, GDC 2021 to 2023 audio bundle, uh, it's really permissive. But the others are rather permissive as well, from what I remember. So yeah, a great resource. And uh, this brings us to the end. So we've learned how we can import sounds. We've learned how we can customize them a bit um, using sound cues. We've learned how we can add some basic ambient sounds. We've learned how we can add sounds uh, that happen when specific events are triggered. And we've learned how we can add sounds to the UI. So, 
With that, we're pretty much done adding stuff to our game. The next episode will be the last, and we're going to be looking at packaging. How we can, you know, turn this project into something that users can actually execute without having to run the engine themselves, which is very useful. So, I hope you're looking forward to that, and until then, see ya, and Creator out.